My name is Apollo Ono. I grew up in Seattle, Washington. I am the only child in my family. My father was a Japanese uh, immigrant who came to the U.S. when he was 17 years old. Couldn't speak English, didn't have any money, had a camera around his neck, a Nikon camera, sold the camera for kind of like living expenses and food, and then began his kind of journey into the world. And he tried every single job imaginable. So my dad ended up and still does cut hair in downtown Seattle. You know, growing up in a, you know, um, single parent household where your father is kind of like a tiger dad, he very much pushed me in every direction. So whether it was academics, whether it was sports, whether it was music, he tried to make me do as many activities as possible before I got home at the end of the day. So I would basically just be wiped out tired and I wouldn't be crazy when I got home, which never worked by the way. Like I was always out of control. I've come down a lot since. My biracial identity, me being a Hapa, growing up in Seattle, going to a junior high where I felt like it was predominantly Asian. I remember during lunch, like all of the Asian kids ate together, all of the African American kids ate together, all of the white kids ate together. It was very strange. And I was kind of like just floating around, partially because I was just a bad kid <clears throat> who just had like a ton of energy and I just wanted to be friends with everybody. Uh, and also partially because I didn't know which side accepted me for who I was. Because I didn't look, I don't necessarily look Asian 100%. I look mixed of some, some descent, but kind of ambiguous in some capacity. So I struggled with that at an early age. And as I grew older, I, that pride, like I said, I became more and more proud of kind of my heritage and my background. And I think probably in the last, probably the last 15 years, it's really grown uh, significantly more. And I think it's been much more celebrated. The world has evolved and progressed so rapidly. Uh, I think the average Asian American voice is significantly louder and brighter and prouder than ever before, which I think is a beautiful thing. So I got interested in short track speed skating when, the first time was when I watched on the Olympics in 1992 with my father. So we were watching the Olympics at home. It was the first time I'd ever seen short track speed skating, first time I ever heard of it. I always explain like this, guys were wearing these like super, aerodynamic, tight racing suits. And when you're 12, this looks very much like Superman or like a superhero figure. And then they're like whipping around this hockey rink at like 40 miles an hour, leaning at these impossible angles. It looked fake. And I was like, I wanna do that. I wanna lean over these impossible angles like with that cool, that, that skin suit or that racing suit. The first time I went to the Winter Olympics in 2002, um, I was 19 years old. I was, kind of the reigning World Cup and had, I was supposed to win, right? I was expected to win. I was the cover of Sports Illustrated. And as an athlete who's competing in an Olympic sport, in between Olympics, you're still competing. You're competing at World Cups, you're competing at local domestic competitions, international competitions, world championships, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember walking into the uh, opening ceremonies. Now this is post 9-11. So this was when security was at like an all-time high. This was in February 2002. And we're sitting, you know, only a few rows in front of the president. And that's when it kind of hit me like, wow, I'm competing. It's much different than just competing for yourself, right? There's a lot of other expectations here that I couldn't quantify. I was like a 19 year old, but I was really like 16 in my brain. And I just, it didn't hit me until that moment. And that's when I was, that's when I was really telling myself, wow, this is unlike anything I could have ever prepared for. And then obviously standing on the podium in those games, I won a, a gold medal in those games. It was my first gold medal. And I remember standing on the, on the podium and granted this was on home soil, so you've got you know the thousands and thousands of fans in, in the stadium all cheering and chanting and singing the national anthem and chanting your name. It was, it was memorable in many different ways, um, but it was impactful too. I just loved what I was doing loved and I wanted to compete, I wanted to win, and I wanted to display whatever the best version of myself was during those two weeks of the games. My thoughts on Asian Americans rising to perform at the highest levels in sports, I think is incredible. It does, it does two things for me. One, it makes me smile, and two, it makes me say like, damn, it's about time. So I, I think it's amazing. I think it, I think it speaks to a few things in our society. One not only the acceptance, but also the promotion of a diverse and biracial community that exists, that's always existed here, that is strong, that's vibrant, and it's growing. 
and it showcases, I think, um, some of these attributes that I've always felt were inherent within what makes this country, the United States, what it is today. And that is, people came here in search of a better life, and they did so with all of the hard work and the efforts that they brought from their native country. And that trickle-down philosophy is now into the hearts and the minds, hopefully, of this next generation of athlete. And typically, I think in the past, you know, Asian Americans were never thought of being these superstar athletes. That's just the reality. I think that's really changing. That paradigm and that social flux of conversation is there are no limits. It doesn't matter what type of background you have. And in fact, if you have a diverse background, it's a massive attribute to you because you can draw upon the, all of these incredible experiences and psychological differences that make us as human beings. But depending on where we're from geographically, what our parents went through, these can be and have massive positive in, uh, impacts in our life as an athlete, um, as a performer, whatever that is.